What's up, Sooner Nation? Welcome to the Sooner Surge. Again, thank you for being part of what's going on here. If you're not a part of it officially, click the subscribe button, enable those notifications, like and comment, interact with us uh, as we talk OU sports. Today, uh, OU is on a buy, but I'll tell you what's not on a buy. That's the recruiting trend uh, for the University of Oklahoma as they continue to make some noise in the recruiting world, uh, specifically Jay, some offensive linemen. Uh, we talked about on our last video, Grant Bricks, how it could be a possibility, kind of been under the radar, been a quiet recruitment, but there is possibility that uh, OU is heavily in the mix. And this morning you can see a future cast has been put out uh, for Grant Bricks to end up at the University of Oklahoma. So let's talk about that first. Yeah, just a guy that we've talked about for a while now, being uh, kind of between OU and Nebraska. You saw the future cast, I believe, by Brandon Drum uh, last night. A uh, guy that had his senior night last night at uh, his high school game. And you would think the commitment would be dropping soon. Um, you know, senior night now, he originally, I believe, wanted to commit before the season started. Okay, so I would think a, a commitment from him may be soon. Uh, you already got this last week, the commit from the number one player in Europe, uh, offensive lineman. You got Grant Bricks now that got future cast, offensive lineman. Um, you have another offensive lineman in the mix, Eddie Pierre-Louis. Uh, so Bill Biedenbo, if you remember right, earlier in the year, kind of I heard a lot of noise about Bill Biedenbo not getting some guys recruiting-wise. And now you look up. And it could be a tremendous class for Bill Biedenbo. Yeah, the size on these guys is oh. un their NFL caliber size now, without even being in, in Schmitty. Uh, you know, Daniel Akinkumi is 6'5", 300. Grant Briggs is – he's 6'6", six, six, isn't he? Uh, I'm not sure. I just know he's a big boy, great yeah. player, great talent. I mean – And and he's one that – the longer the recruitment went, I, I think the more – uh, the better I felt as a Sooner fan that maybe it wouldn't be Nebraska, but it would be leaning towards Oklahoma. That seems to be the case. Uh, and like you said, and then Eddie Pierre-Louis. I mean, these are three guys uh, that OU is going to increase their O-line production in just a monumental way. Yeah, and if they can land all three, I think we talked about that in an earlier video, like – if they can land two out of the three, it would be great. If they land all three, it's tremendous. Um, and so, in the Red River rivalry game, I know a lot of people. Uh, I've seen a lot of you know people say, "Well, that game's over. Let's move on." And I agree. Let's move on. But the impact it has on recruiting cannot be understated. Uh, it has a huge impact on recruiting. People see that. People want to be a part of it. What's being built there at Oklahoma. And so you're going to keep seeing recruiting trends moving up. And I wouldn't be surprised personally if guys that are that have been out on OU, maybe OU was in on early, that, that they then fell out of the race on, may come back in uh, into the into the fold. I, I, I would just keep keep eyes open for that because of that that win in the in the trend for OU's program. I mean, uh, these games coming up, they should be heavily favored and win. And if they do. Then you have the playoff rankings come out, and then you have all this other stuff, and the national attention is just going to keep growing. Uh, yeah. But let's talk about a guy, Sooner fans. Uh, you're going to want to pay attention, okay? Really want to pay attention to this week because this week on October 19th, Michael Boganowski commits. Uh, that's this Thursday. Uh, be tuning in. We'll have more information as it gets closer, but things are looking very good in that recruitment uh, with Michael Boganowski, four-star safety, linebacker kind of cheetah mix. Uh, really just another guy that's uber talented. Yeah, and if you haven't seen, we, we did do a video on Boganowski a couple of weeks ago. Check that one out. But uh, this would be just another, uh, you say four-star, that's correct. He's uh, elite talent, athlete can play multiple spots on the defensive side of the ball. And like you said, Thursday, that announcement will drop. And, you know, I expect it to be great news for OU. And really that's OU kind of stacking some things together uh, this last week and this week. And, you know, there may be talks of some, some visits uh, this week at the UCF game. 
We will make sure we drop a visit list out before that game as well. But And the Grant Briggs thing, uh, there's no commitment date on the Grant Briggs uh, yeah. recruitment. And we, we've talked about it. Is it going to be something kind of like the Eli Bowen thing where it's very just kind of hush-hush and, and announced in a quiet way? Or is there going to be some kind of commitment uh, uh, event or something like that? We know that we will have people. Uh, we will figure this out uh, as far as the Grant Briggs commitment and get that to you here. I don't know. What are your thoughts on that, Jay? Yeah, I, I don't know when that's going to be. Like you said, I, it, he's a. It's a different recruitment with him, kind of like uh, a little bit like McKinley because he's very quiet. So I, I don't know as far as when that's going to drop or if. Uh, who knows? I mean, who knows how that's going to work out with him? I haven't heard a whole lot on that. Um, uh, but I, I will say, you know, this past week when when Daniel committed. Uh, if anybody didn't see the article floating around about his visit and about the silent commit and then Danny Okoye silent commit, I believe, uh, with the poker chips. And then I'm sure it, it, unless you're under a rock and you don't live on, tw- you don't uh, have a Twitter profile or X or whatever, you saw Danny Okoye's tweet earlier this week after that saying, I wonder how many other silent commits we have out there. Uh, wouldn't spill the beans, obviously, but. Uh, you know, that kind of lends itself to think there's a couple more guys out there that have already silently committed just from that tweet. Oh, for sure. And I, I just what they're doing in the recruiting, uh, it, it's unbelievable, just not on the field, but what they're doing in recruiting right now. And uh, it's going to continue to to climb. And, you know, there's we're, we're halfway through the season in a season in which there are some dudes, and I'm talking dudes at other schools that, are probably going to enter the portal here in about six weeks. Uh, there's some guys who maybe haven't played like they thought they would or seen the time or don't like what's going on. Always going to be some changes. We'll see how many positions OU has open for some of those portal guys, but uh, there's definitely some possibilities in that area. And we haven't talked any about Winery right now, so uh, we will continue to – I don't know if you want to say anything on that at all, Jay. Well, I just was going to say something on the portal thing. You mentioned it. And I I think Brent Venables, I think he went to the portal last year, really had to have it, okay, because doesn't have enough recruiting cycles. But I think Brent Venables is a guy and a coach that wants to develop from the high school level. I, I, I think if he had a pick, he would pick high school talent over portal, and uh, in certain situations, obviously. But I don't think he's going to be a guy – you know, like Lincoln Riley, who's going to go portaling so much in the offseason every year. I think he'd rather develop it uh, from the high school talent. And just hearing him talk, I think that's his preferred way. Now, obviously, he's proven he's if he needs to go to the portal and get guys, he will to make the team better. So I think it'll be a little mixed bag. But it, I think it's different than the way some coaches out there approach it. You know, you got Dabo Sweeney, who really hates the portal in general, won't even go out there really. And then you got Venables, who does go out there. He did last year, and it's been a huge thing for this year's team. But I think moving forward, the more – if he keeps having top five recruiting classes, then you're going to the portal to get a guy or two guys that may fit in. You're not going to get five or six, you know what I mean? Yeah, four and five stars matter. They make a difference. Uh, it changes things. I know he's going to continue to get some. Hopefully one this week in Boganowski uh, and maybe even some Grant Bricks uh, a commitment this week as well. So, yeah, oh, you on the bye week, but not all, in the recruiting world, Jay. Yeah, yeah, and also, uh, all all viewers here, please be be following us because later today we're also going to drop, uh, you know, all the guys that have committed to Oklahoma, they've been playing high school football, and we're going to have a video uh, kind of recapping all those guys uh, yesterday and the day before and what they did. Uh, there's some great performances out there from former Sooners. Even Dylan Gabriel was on the – Carball Albert Field watching uh, those guys. So it, it, be, be paying attention for that. Yeah. So, yeah. Enjoy the uh, week off of no OU football, but uh, they're still busy, especially in the recruiting world. So, yeah, stay tuned. Be subscribed. Join this YouTube channel. Appreciate all you guys. Till next time. Boomer. Boomer. <laughs>